Okay, so you guys see the ghetto setup that I have going on, but you know, you have to do what you have to do until you get the tools to be where you want to be. So just doing what I have to do until I get to where I want to be. So I'm using my phone and I have it like set up on some art supplies. Um, shout out to me for attending, <laughs> for coming here today to speak to you guys, to speak on my YouTube channel. Shout out to me, just kidding. Welcome to my channel. I hope you had a wonderful day today. And if you didn't have a good day today, just know it's okay because tomorrow you'll have a better one. It's a fresh new day with lots of opportunity tomorrow. First thing first, I want to say this channel is going to be all over the place. Um, I'm literally just going to come and talk to the camera. Um... about anything that comes to mind. In my last video, I kind of talked about, my last live, I talked about how I <laughs> am focusing on my mental health and I'm seeking a lot of treatment. I am currently, I don't, there's so much resistance. Like right now I'm experiencing a lot of resistance to filming this video, putting my information out there just because I'm so afraid to be of being judged. I'm like really afraid of being judged. But honestly, I think that society's a bit better off than it was, say if I would have posted a video like this two or three, maybe even four or five years ago. So I think that I'm okay, but there is something in me that's really terrified about speaking about my mental health. Um, that was real I didn't think I was gonna say something like that but um <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable um let me just start off by saying this it was extremely difficult for me to get my diagnosis um well as far as complex PTSD it wasn't that hard to get diagnosed with complex PTSD um but it was very hard for me to get diagnosed with panic disorder social anxiety and anxiety and and it was easy for me to get diagnosed with clinical depression but panic disorder specifically because my version of panicking looks a bit different so right now i'm very uncomfortable i'm very high and anxiety oh, i'm not high as i'm like crack pipe high but like crack pipe pipe high but like high anxiety like i'm very anxious right now and most people that just looks like, oh, and also disassociate, by the way. But for most people, being super anxious looks like being jittery, being, <sighs> it just looks different. The leg shakes, constant looking around, which I do that sometimes when I'm anxious. Hyperventilating, I do that. Fainting, I do that. I experience that. But like, I also experience extreme numbness and that comes along with the PTSD. Coupled with like extreme sadness, <laughs> which comes from the clinical depression. And then disassociating, you just feel like you're outside of your body and there's like someone else contributing to <sighs> the reasons why I want to make videos like this even though it's really hard for me is because if there was, my dog is so cute. If there was videos like this on the internet already, 
that would have helped me so much, you know? And I think for my situation specifically, and I'm also I'm not on TikTok. Someone told me that TikTok, it is more, there's a lot of people posting like their personal business and experiences on their TikTok. But, it's, but like, people sometimes talk about <clears throat> depression, but they don't really like go in deep details. And I'm the type of person that if you're not detailed with me, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I won't be able to identify what's happening. Like, I need details. Like, <sighs> Oh, my God. Water. It was ice cold. It's fine. okay so when i think about like mental health i just want you guys to know like this isn't a choice this isn't something that you just choose it's some it's not something that you can control either you don't just wake up and choose to be mentally ill or to struggle mentally and it's not something that is you know exclusive for like one into one group a type of person everyone experiences it and it may be more severe for some people and it may be less severe for others it's something that we should all talk openly and candidly about because nine times out of ten maybe you're not going through experiencing any struggles at this time but it's something that could possibly happen in the future and it's also something that someone really close to you may be struggling with it's something that someone really close to you may be struggling with someone or someone that you'll meet in passing that may be struggling with and if you educate yourself about mental health and what it Sorry, I got a message. And what it is, you may be able to help somebody. You may really be able to help somebody, and that would be, that's really good. So, yeah. Having multiple diagnoses is difficult. For me because you I would I have to um, I have to process things differently you know what I mean like if there is a situation where I'm in conflict and my mind starts spiraling which is you know it's life it happens you find conflict sometimes experience conflict sometimes um no big deal but for me i would have to process okay why is this happening okay so what are the actual factual things that took place why am i feeling this way hmm. am i feeling super defensive because of this reason or is or, or am I experiencing this, interpreting this different than how I experienced it? Am I experiencing the simple situation while living in trauma? Because if you experience something that's simple, but you're still living in your trauma every day, chow, it hit different, okay? It hits different. Think of it like this. Say you have a best friend. You've been best friends for years. And you just got married. And you found out your best friend has actually been sleeping with your spouse for two years straight. Now, fast forward six months later, you done left your best friend. You done left your, your, your um, spouse. Now you're dating again. You have new friends. 
and you have a new spouse. Your friend tells you that your spouse looked very beautiful today. You're gonna experience that differently. <laughs> You're gonna experience that. I don't know if that's just like a really bad example, but I'm telling you, bro, you're going to experience that differently than how you would have experienced it before you found out about your friend and your spouse, before you experienced your betrayal. Because if you're still living in that trauma, your brain is going to process trauma. Like, oh my God, I am going through this shit again. Okay, I'll pick you up. Okay, he's just bugging, child. Your brain's gonna process it like, oh my god, I am going through this shit again. I already know what to do. So, think of it like this. You'll start spiraling and you won't have control over the way that you react or respond in the situation because it's all rooted in trauma. So instead of reacting to your friend saying that your spouse is beautiful, you're reacting to your childhood best friend sleeping with your, your ex-wife or ex-husband. And that sucks. And that's what it's like. And once you acknowledge that, it's not like, okay, I acknowledge it and then like... <laughs> I, I acknowledge that I may experience some things in trauma. You know, I'm still living in my trauma. That's not the cure. You, you have to do the work to be able to retrain and reprogram your own brain. Isn't that wild? You have to reprogram your own brain so that you do not experience life live your life through this the eyes of the person who was traumatized that's wild isn't it you have to literally brainwash yourself <sighs> so the other day when i was on live i talked a little bit about like how i'm just seeing different correlations so on reddit oh i saw someone read off reddit maybe i should do that as well <laughs> oh. can you hear me can you hear me let me turn my youtube on okay so, why is this not working? My phone is really dumb, like. Whoa, what the hell? What is going on? Okay, I'm gonna turn this phone. I need to go turn, give this phone back to T-Mobile because it, it doesn't work. Like, at this point, I'm done trying. Um, anyways, I was gonna go to Reddit and read some stuff about astro projecting and how I feel like that correlates and connects to a lot of things that I learned in therapy from a psychiatrist, a psychologist, and a therapist. I wanted to break that down and really talk about that, ask some questions, ponder on it, and do some more research. It's just strange to me how this is all connected. Let's see something. Let's see, maybe it's on my, let's see, maybe it's in my email. I think I emailed it to myself. <sighs> One thing that I'm super like interested in is you, if you go to so go to an, a therapist, any good therapist or any therapist, even a bad mediocre therapist will tell you if you have like really bad anxiety, the go-to thing is breath work. You have to do breath work. You have to have to learn to do breath work because if you have, if you master breath work, you control your own heart rate. 
once you control your heart rate, you control um, the way your body reacts to stress, to anxiety. And then that tells your brain that you're not immediately in danger. When you control your breath, you control how much oxygen your brain is getting, you control how often your body relaxes or tenses, if you control your, sorry, if you control your breath, you control all of those things. So that's very interesting. Keep that in mind. Now, I want you to think about this. put these headphones up i was using them for my other phone because the audio was going in and out <clears throat> girl he's licking the damn <laughs> water off the floor but um i want you to think about it like this like i said i just explained it right now, if you go to people who are really big in spirituality, who are really big in to manifestation, meditation, the thing that they will tell you is in order to <clears throat> in order to change your mindset and the way that you think about the world, you have to control, you have to do breath work because breath work will allow you to train your brain which is actual factual in both cases. What's very interesting about that is the therapist is saying it, the psychologist is saying it, the, the psychiatrist is saying it, the MD is saying it. And this is something that I've really experienced in my personal life. Now you go online on the internet, spiritualists are saying it, shamans, mudas, girl, God forgive me, Buddhists, monks, Christians are all saying it, and they just say it differently. Meditate on the word of the Lord and you shall find. Um, stop and breathe. Um, count down. Do your breath techniques. Um, just so many things. People who believe in manifestation. So many things. And Do I believe in manifestation? I honestly don't know what I believe, and I guess... That's why I'm so open to learn and speak about, you know, my experiences because no one, no one knows like for sure, but it's very interesting, very interesting to me that that is the case, that a doctor and a, and a spiritualist would say the same thing. Hmm, just something to think about. So, yeah, I was, um... Oh no, somebody just emailed me. Yeah, so I was just thinking about that and like thinking about that, of course, it just makes me wonder. So what is the truth? So how are we supposed to know the truth? For me, you know, I grew up Christian. I mean, I don't, no one knows that, but like for me, I grew up a Christian. Um, came from a Christian background, Christian household. Um, as a child, I made the decision to, you know, believe in God. It was a decision that I decided to, I remember actively, and maybe this wasn't everyone else's experience, but for me, I remember thinking, this is something I want to believe in. This is something I want to learn more about, was Jesus Christ. Because... The way they kind of sold it and presented it to me as in my childhood was if you do the right thing, you can go to heaven. Who, of course, I want to go to heaven. Like, who? And heaven is literally the opposite of pain and suffering. And all I know right now is pain and suffering. Of course, I want to go to heaven. Of course. And I still believe in Christianity, and I, I, my only thing is, I don't believe how I used to. Like, I'm not as faithful in, in Christianity. 
And that literally was just tainted by a lot of experiences I had in the church. Um, disgusting. Things happened in the church and it made me look at Christianity differently. And it's the truth. I hope no one gets offended by this video. If you're a Christian and you get offended by this video, I just want to apologize in advance. If you're anything that I named, spiritualist, a monk, a Buddha, a pagan person, um, I just want to apologize to you in advance if I offend you. But I just think it's very interesting how we all kind of like say the same thing. Even people who are, you know, people who are inherently good, but they're still, they don't, if they don't believe in God, you know, agnostics, atheists, um, is it agnostic? People who don't believe in God, it's not, I used to, I used to like, I used to see like, I'm not gonna wake Sean. I used to see like, is that my way? I used to see like, this is so tough. I'm probably gonna delete this video. I'm not gonna post this cause I'm just all over the place. But like, this is who I am right now. Is this who I'm always going to be? Oh, Jesus, I really hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Because, uh, child. <sighs> but right now, this is who I am. I'm just a mess right now. I'm just a mess. This sucks. It really sucks. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a tea. Um, I'm probably gonna delete this and I'll come back. Because right now and I'm like, <sighs> I thought I was gonna get on here and create some content and have like a, something to offer to this platform. But I'm just not, I'm not in the space to do it. It took so much energy out of me just to do my makeup. And it only took me like 45 minutes, but like, <laughs> this shit sucks. It really sucks. It really sucks. Like, every time I find a reason to like push through, I also see on like the parallel opposite reason not to push through so i came to youtube started doing videos i'm like let me just put some content out there like at the end of the day if i'm so you know if i if i'm persistent it it'll work out
but then on the other end it's like I can't even to record content about stuff that doesn't really matter would be fake <laughs> I was going to do a video about like what women bring to the table and just talk about like how we should be more focused on ourselves before we look for a table to be filled by someone else and I can't even remember if I started to talk about that in this video um, <laughs> but my symptoms are literally so bad that talking to a camera Good thing to do. It's really hard to do. I can't talk about stuff that I don't really give a shit about. I don't give a fuck. I'm not looking for a man right now. If I find one, I find one. If I don't, I don't. Does I don't give a fuck. So then I tried to talk about like religious beliefs and like mental health stuff and it's like that is something I'm interested in that is something I'm passionate in and I meant everything that I said but <laughs> the energy just my energy it dissipates <sighs> I wish that I knew how long this was gonna last in my life. You know what I mean? Cause then if I knew the exact end date for this mental health shit, I would be fine. I would be, okay, I know that uh, by 2024, January 3rd, I'm good. I already know that. So uh, let me just get there. And I think the reason why so many people lose their, 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 <laughs> their gift, which is life to mental health, it's because they just want it to end and they don't know when it's going to end and like it's like what's the point of pushing through if it's just going to be another another year of this shit and people don't people don't get it people don't understand let me just say this there's nothing you can say there's nothing you can say there's nothing a person can say to me, right? If I was to call my mother right now and tell her what I'm going through, there's nothing my mother, my mother, the person who birthed me, could say to cheer me up. She'll tell me she loves me and I won't feel anything. She'll tell me she's rooting for me and I won't feel anything. Because all I feel is the depression. All I feel is the PTSD. All I feel is the anxiety. That's what I feel. That sometimes looks like numbness. That sometimes looks like not remembering, blocking out. That looks like flashbacks, re-experiencing. That's what that looks like. So there's nothing anyone can really say to me. And there's nothing that I can really say to myself. And there is like... <laughs> I know that it takes work and I know it takes time to get out of the state that I'm in. But boy, does the bad days seem to outweigh the good ones tremendously. I'll have like one good, good day out of 90. And I'm not the type of person who literally, who likes, literally, who typically likes labels like, Oh, I'm an African American female who has complex PTSD and blah 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 blah. I'm not that type of person. I'm the type of person who strays away from labels because I don't even know I don't understand them. And I feel like once you put a label on someone, they have to they become the label. But in this instance, I talk about my diagnosis as a label so much because I don't understand it. I don't understand what's happening. I don't get it. I don't get it. <sighs> and I feel like every day my mind is constantly expanding. 
maybe that comes with like maturity and becoming an adult I don't know but like I don't know it's really hard it's difficult And I think that sometimes people, people don't understand that, yes, mental health can look like a constant meltdown. It may look like throwing a tantrum, crying spells, <laughs> screaming, um, rocking back and forth, stomping your feet, fainting, hyperventilating, 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 <laughs> um, hysterically laughing, hysterically crying. What did you do? Come here. I think my dog peed somewhere. I'm gonna have to look for it. Cage. I don't know where he peed. Whatever. I'll just have to mop. Like, but um, it may look like a a number of things. But what we don't talk about is the fact that this. Can also be depression <laughs> this can also be depression and a cry for help and we we live in a culture where people use words like stonewalling narcissism abuse trauma and those things are real they really are but I think that we're getting to a point where we're overusing those words. Sometimes, sometimes your ex-boyfriend, I'm gonna keep it real ladies. As many as y'all, like a narcissist is a very rare personality type. Like, I just want y'all to like, get that through, like once you understand that, then you'll kind of get what I'm saying. Like. It's being overused. Like, all of y'all did not date a narcissist. You know how many women I've met that says, like, oh, I, I, he was a narcissist, that's why it didn't work out. Like, are you sure? Because a narcissist is a very rare personality type. And they're actually extremely intelligent people. Um, that's why they're so rare. <laughs> um... I don't know, I guess I'm saying that because my fear is that we'll use that words like that get sucked into pop culture, like narcissism and stonewalling and gaslighting. They get sucked into pop culture and all of a sudden that becomes what mental health is about. You know what I mean? Suffering from the hands of a narcissist from the ends of gaslighting from the ends of stonewalling um experiencing emotional abuse and that's all valid but there's there's so much there's so much more to mental health than that than those things there's so much more there's so much more And I think that it needs to be talked about more. Excuse me. I think that it needs to be talked about a lot more. And um, right now it's, it's not. Did you know you could lose your job for having mental illness? Did you know that's what happened to me? Mm. That sucks. But you know, the reason why I'm not like, the reason what's helping me get over it is like, there's nothing actually. I was gonna try to make it, make a point to say like, oh, 
be positive and uplifting and all that other stuff. Like, this channel is going to be really depressing. This channel is going to be really depressing. This channel is going to be really depressing. I can tell. Already. Yep. Depressing as a motherfucker. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? At this point, I'm rambling. Okay, maybe I should tell like a story or something. All right, well, I'm going to end this video and start another one, a quick little story time, because this video, I was like really like just soaking in my sadness and the purpose of doing music, um, mm, music videos. Oh, child, maybe I'm gonna be in a music video one day, you know, give a, a little body, honey. But the purpose of these videos was to get me out of that state of like deep depression, which I can sit in and like soak in that for a very long time. But I'm trying to like switch it up, peep the movement, the hand gestures that help sometimes like moving around. I'm trying to get out of that, you know? But um, we'll see what happens. I'm probably gonna delete this video because why would I upload this? That's the real question. Yeah, I'm gonna delete this video. I'm not gonna delete it. This is what it's like being a Gemini. I never know what I'm gonna do. Literally, like, I never know what I'm going to do. That's what it's like. That is what it's like being a Gemini. Um, Okay, whew, I feel a little better. That was a tough, you know, little monologue that I gave, you know, just talking, running my chops. That was hard for me because, I mean, I feel like that would be hard for anyone. So I don't know, I'm not gonna really go too much into it, but moving forward, I am going to try not to be so sad all the time. That's a dumb thing to say. Like, I'm, every day I'm trying not to be sad, but like, specifically, you know, I don't know. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, I just messed up my makeup. It's all on my head. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna roll out, like... Bye. I'm gonna just say in my video on a better note. I know that people come to YouTube to be entertained and I do wanna provide some sense of entertainment. So moving forward, just know that my first goal isn't necessarily to entertain you, it's to be open and vulnerable. Secondly, I would like to entertain you. So I did have a moment of vulnerability, just expressing, you know, how heavy depression has been. Um, but that's okay. So just bear with me. Um, I'm gonna record another video. Well, shit. I might as well keep going on this video. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about what it was like growing up with facial paralysis. Okay, I was born in DC in Grady Southeast Hospital and 
basically my mother had difficulty pushing me out so she couldn't push so what the doctor did is he used a tool called forceps which is now illegal to use for birth and he like clamped me and yanked me out my mom and i was just born with facial paralysis due to that and here's a picture where you can kind of see the paralysis my face on my left side droops my right side I have really high cheekbones and I have dimples as well. Well, I don't want to show this picture because my siblings are in it, but it was another, it's another child picture. But I have really high cheekbones I mean, cheek placements. And here you can see it just doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work. Hello, you're not working. But, um, and it looks like my smile, the muscles in my face are like pulling my smile downwards. And then I also notice like the muscles in my neck over here, it's just really weird. Like it just feels like there's nothing there. And this side of my face is fatter than this side. Even when I was slimmer and I, if I lose a lot of weight, once I lose a lot of weight, it's still gonna be the same. Like this side is still gonna be slimmer than this side, you know? And um, this eye doesn't close sometimes and I blink a lot, but this eye doesn't close unless I like really put in an effort. I also can't lift this eyebrow like at all, um, which the eyebrows don't, it really doesn't matter to me because like you know that's gonna benefit me in the long run but the fact that i can't move the, like the top of my forehead that much because like i won't women get botox so that they feel hard Ugh. women get botox so that their forehead people get botox so that their forehead foreheads don't have wrinkles in it but i won't have that problem because yeah i just won't um and then like this lip droops a lot so now i'm gonna talk so now I want to like, oh, another thing is I also have scoliosis. So <laughs> this side of my body is shorter. The left side of my body is shorter than the right side. And my cur my spine kind of curves, like projecting to the left, which is interesting. Um, which the clinical term for what I have is technically called, technically called herbs palsy. And then most times, it is caused by a traumatic birth and it leaves people paralyzed on their left side completely. I did get a bit luckier because um, I'm not, you know, as bad, you know, I have self, I'm self-conscious and insecure about it. But when I looked up to see what other people look like with herbs palsy, I am kind of lucky. Um, so that's what happened there um growing up it was difficult i was always called cricket lip um <laughs> cricket lip mean mugger um two-faced people will call me two-faced um teachers made comments about it um all the time i remember when i was in like the third grade and i had a teacher who we were learning about diseases and stuff. So the diseases that we were learning about were like gangrene, um, diabetes, heart disease, heart failure, um, lung disease, cancer, and also <laughs> facial, no, what is it? Not facial paralysis, but what is it? Bell's palsy. And so my presentation was on gangrene. My uncle, or my step, my stepmother's uncle actually had gangrene at one point in time. So I did the project and it comes, the day comes for us to present our projects and the teacher, there's this girl, I forgot, I know her name. Let's say her name is Sharnita. <laughs> This girl named Charnita, she's 
why did I say Sharnita? But this girl named Sharnita, she like goes up to present her paper and her her project was obviously on Bell's palsy. And so she does her presentation. It was really interesting. Everyone was like just listening and whatever. And then they get to, the teacher begins to discuss um, going to meet more detail. And she gave like the girl feed, feedback on Bell's palsy. And she's like, just to let you guys know, Bell's palsy is, um, <laughs> it's like a disease caused by bacteria, um, a built up bacteria and it can cause your face to become paralyzed on one side. And she was just like explaining it in detail and she's like, where's Joy? And I'm like, oh my God, no, this bitch. And she like makes me stand up and she's like, smile. So I smiled. Mind you, this, I'm in the third grade, third or fourth grade. Not I lied, I was probably in the fifth grade because this is right before I went to yeah, I was in the fifth grade for sure. So I smiled, I'm like, it's just like, you see how her face is like slanted and it's paralyzed on one side. And like the whole class, <laughs> it's like some shit off a movie. The entire class just bust out laughing. And then like from that day on, well, I was already getting bullied for my face to begin with. But like from there, it got even more intense. Cause like, they're like, aha girl, you're, we know your secret. like. Your face is like that because you're dirty. You told us you were born that way. Like, no, you're dirty and that's why your face is like that. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> and I'm just like, and I remember like going to the playground and no one wanted to play with me for like two weeks straight. But I was always like, really outgoing and I was always funny even as a little girl I could make adults laugh um which I, that's one thing I hate about being depressed is I'm I feel like I'm losing my comedic essence essence you know what I mean which <laughs> and um so that's like my first example of like an adult commenting on my face and you know, with children, I always knew like, well, children pick one of you because I would see them bully each other as well. Like, it would definitely, I got it worse. Like, don't get it fucked up. Like, I was really bu bullied, like, really, really bad. But then also, I felt like it was, I felt like, you know what? When I get older, I want to have to deal with it. I always thought, like, when I get to high school, it won't be that bad, you know? Because, like, we were so young. Like, kids can be cruel and I always knew that even as a child like y'all niggas just evil type shit you know what I'm saying and um no it didn't work like that I was still getting bullied I was getting bullied at home I was getting bullied at school shit I, it was nowhere on the planet that I could go and I get bullied I could go to the store people would be like what's wrong with your face I remember adults asking my mother what what's wrong with that girl face? Oh. I remember going to get different checkups. Excuse me, getting different checkups and the doctor saying, What happened to your face? And I'll just explain to them I was born that way. And they were like, they'll literally just say, Oh, there's nothing we can do about it. And I'm just like, but I didn't I I didn't ask. Like <sighs> and also like I should have been to a specialist. I haven't been to a specialist until I turned 24. And I went on my own. I didn't even know there was doctors for this. Who cares? I guess. Um, yeah, when I got to the sixth grade, I, got, I went to a bigger school. There's new kids. I got bullied even more. Now I started to pick up weight. So I'm getting bullied for being big. I was always really tall. I was the tallest girl in my, well not the tallest, but one of the taller girls in my class. Bullied for that. And I'm dark skinned. Bullied for that. But like specifically the facial paralysis, like that was people's go-to thing. Like girl, you just mad because your face like that. And I'm like, I'm actually, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't mad, I just couldn't process it. Like I knew that my face was different from everyone else's. 
but like when people would just talk to me like i would assume that they're looking at my face and like her face is like really fucked up <laughs> i would literally think like oh they're just looking at my face like there's nothing you know it felt like i was an animal in the zoo and like people were coming to see my face hmm. that sucks but yeah I remember, so I bullied from there, and it was like, even people who disguise themselves as my, as my friend, but talk about my face, or laugh about jokes made about my face. And it took me into my adulthood to realize, like, you never had a friend, bro. Like, you never had a friend. Like, you were, you literally never had a friend. That sucks. <laughs> but, um, oh well. Anyways, <laughs> um, so middle school was tough. Then I get to high school. And I want to kind of say something else about middle school, but I think I'll save that for another video. But let's just say, I'll just say I got really depressed in middle school. And I just wanted it to end. Because the bullying was so bad. And I was also getting abused and bullied at home. So. And it says, it feels weird to say that in front of a camera. But the truth is the truth. Who gonna check me? Um. Yeah. Abuse is weird because, like, the victim, the person who's at the end of the abuse doesn't realize it's abuse until, like, that is either explained to them by someone else or they find out that there's better treatment. It's strange. Really strange. So, next topic. No, 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 same topic, sorry. So, in high school... I actually, I did have one friend. I had one friend. I would actually say two friends. But we weren't like... I don't know, girl. It's debatable. <laughs> so in high school, I was still getting bullied. But high school was worse than like being bullied in middle school and elementary school because there started to be social media and in high school everyone was developing and going into their first relationships their first boyfriend first girlfriend for his relationship and it was cute to witness but i remember standing behind going to lunch in the cafeteria and like these two guys were talking about me and they were like she never that bitch ugly she never gonna get a man and i was like oh my god and i had to <laughs> i had to pretend like they or like i didn't hear them so i just you know I, I got used to doing shit like that but high school was really bad because like everyone else was developing relationships and i i wasn't And at first, it didn't really bother me. It doesn't really bother. It didn't bother me that everyone else had a relationship and I didn't because I wasn't really interested in any anyone in my school. I had like one crush on one dude, but then he went to another school, I think. I don't know what happened to him, but I just remember not seeing him as much. Um, but high school was weird in the way that like, I, I guess I didn't really notice. I didn't really, you know, it didn't bother me that I didn't have anyone, but I didn't really understand that other people noticed that I didn't have like a relationship in high school until someone, until it started to be thrown in my face. Like, I bet you ain't never looking at me. Ah, you want to be, you know. I guess I didn't notice until I was the butt of another joke. <laughs> um, college. 
I literally had to fight people because of my face. Because people go to thing to say was, you just mad your face like that, bitch. Oh, I will smack you and make your face go straight. You're, first of all, no, you're not. If you want to fight, let's fight. Like, what's up? Like, it doesn't, doesn't, I ran out of that. that fighting is ghetto and it's for the birds. And I wish I would have known that growing up, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was my experience in high school. I feel like I'm missing a lot. Teachers will comment on it. I remember one, one of my teachers, I used to, I was experiencing, I started a lot of my depressive symptoms in high school, actually. I started experiencing a lot of them in high school. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning to go to school. And a lot of teachers would comment and tell me like, you're a failure, like, you don't even come to school, you don't come to class, like, what's wrong with you? Like, do you gonna be here forever? I had a teacher tell me that, like I was gonna stay in high school forever. And like, I don't know. I literally just couldn't get out of bed. Um, and a lot of shit that I didn't think was affecting me started to s slowly creep up and affect me. So I started a lot of my depressive symptoms, but I also had a friend who was a model and she taught me how to do my makeup so I started doing my makeup while I was in high school as well and I remember my math teacher one day saying I was late to the class but I came in with my eyebrows done and I think I had eyeliner on I don't think I had foundation on but I think I, I definitely had concealer on but I didn't you know even right now I don't have on foundation I just have concealer and powder on right now so but I, and at, at that time I didn't do eyeshadow, so I probably just had mascara, my eyeshadow, I mean my eyebrows and um, some powder. And I remember the teacher just saying to me like, oh, you spent all that time in the mirror, but you still, I wanna say fucked up, but she said like, but your face still, but that won't fix your face. Like you still, your face still looks messed up. Maybe all that time you spent in the mirror trying to fix your face, you could actually put that into effort into doing your homework and coming to school on, on time. And like, she literally just, she roasted the shit out of me in the whole class. Sorry, I said my phone was dying. She literally just roasted the fuck out of me and the whole class was just like, um, <laughs> a couple people were laughing. I ain't gonna hold you, a couple people were laughing. But, like, I don't know. It's, like, one of those things. I don't know. And I've only experienced this with black people, period. Well, I white people talk about my face, too. But, like, what I'm going to say is it's one of those things, like, where you get... If you say something out of turn, I've noticed that people will keep stuff in their back pocket to throw in your face immediately. And the thing that they would throw in my face immediately is, like, I bet your face fucked up. And I just got so used to hearing it. Um, and yeah, but coincidentally, that same teacher ended up getting fired for saying something nasty to another student years later after I had already graduated high school, but long story short, I remember her saying it like it was yesterday and I was just like, and funny enough, one of the girls who used to always talk about me and bully me she actually was in the class that day and she was just looking at me like what the fuck like it's one thing for me to say it but bitch you're a teacher like what no she was probably she was probably like damn i'm gonna use that later and um yeah i remember going to school walking to school having to walk to school because i didn't have money for the bus Experiencing things like shootings and then having to go to school, being poor and then having to go to school. Oh, not I'm about to cry. Oh, 
this helps somebody. I really do. Yeah. I hope this helps someone. When I got to college, the bullying was different. It was more passive. And at this point, for the first time in my life, I started to go to school with other kids, other races of children. I mean, not children, but other races of people like Spanish, Asian, white, a lot of white, a lot of white. <laughs> And so it, it just was different. So I would have to, and I I was I wasn't accustomed to it. So I thought a lot of people were my friend that weren't my friend. And I had to learn over time that tonality, tone, word choice, and body language contributes as well to being socially competent you know what I mean so like kind of like kind of like off Mean Girls when Gina George is like oh my god I love that skirt mm. <laughs> I love that skirt like she's saying she loves your skirt but then as soon as you walk away she like that bitch look terrible like what the fuck but and you're just like, oh, but you didn't have you didn't have to say anything. Like, oh my god, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I had to learn that people actually do that. And in college, I experienced that a lot, and I had to be able to sniff out and maneuver my way through that. And as an adult, people still in the workforce. People still do that passively and directly. It just depends on the person you're talking to. If the person has a bit more class, they'll be passively aggressive and rude and, and just like, oh, you're ugly because your face is messed up. <laughs> well, messed up, whatever that means. Or they'll straight up ask you, what's wrong with your face? One thing, my biggest pet peeve though, is like, like I said, this eye, I have to literally put so much effort in it to close, but I blink a lot. Like, you know how many how many times does a person blink a minute? Let's Google it. You Google, um, ooh, I Googled this and it says a person blinks between 15 to 20 times each minute, 12, 900 to 1200 times each hour, 14,400 times to 19,200 times a day. Now, imagine just blinking, but this eye doesn't close and you're around men who thinks you're winking at them and you're not and you're not sexually attracted to them, you're actually repulsed by them. Not necessarily because of their looks, but because of the way that they just assume that you're winking at them. Imagine that every single day. And there's nothing, I've actually had surgery on this eye, literal surgery so that I could be able to close my eye. And you know what that did? Nothing, as you can see, nothing. Here's the even worse part. Imagine being around couples and having to explain to a woman that you're not winking at her man. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. The most daunting experience in the world is knowing that I'm going to walk out my house today and I'm going to have to explain to someone I'm not winking at you. It's such a fucking awkward conversation to have. It's like, I wasn't winking. Yes, you did. I just saw you. But I'm telling you, bro, I have, you, I have 
a medical condition, I can't close this eye. When you see me doing this, I'm trying to blink. And the only way I can actually blink, close both eyes is if I'm actively thinking about it. And it looks like this, but I'm like actively, maybe I should just only blink like that. It doesn't work. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So that's my whole my whole spill on that. Whew. Huh. And also like people will talk about you like a dog behind your back. But it's just crazy at like the things they choose to talk about. Like, oh baby, I can't help that I got facial paralysis. And you know what's oh that's one thing I wanted to talk about. I'm learning to love my face, like love the face that God gave me, that the good Lord done blessed me with now, child. I'm learning. And obviously as the years progress, there's new technology out there, new methods to correct facial paralysis and facial asymmetry. And at this time, I do not have the means to invest in that, but it's something that I look forward to doing one day that I have looked forward to doing one day. But recently I've just been asking myself, I had one guy say, and here's another thing, another thing I didn't mention. Some guys are really obsessed with very beautiful women. You know, they just love beautiful women. But there's some men who probably won't go for a beautiful girl. They'll go for the girls who look different. The girls who are super, super, super obese. Um, morbidly obese, the girls who have facial paralysis, the girls who have a lot of acne on their face because they like just something different. Um, I have facial paralysis, but I know I'm still attractive. But I, being that I do have facial paralysis, sometimes I do notice that the guys who have like specific kinks of like different types of girls, I get a lot of attention from them, which is weird. which is weird sexual attention let me be specific not like you're interested in me as a person you just you know but anyways now i was talking about the surgery i'm learning to love myself and accept myself for who i am if you would have asked me if someone was to come in come in come into my life someone would have came in, came into my life two three years ago and just give me like whatever the amount of the surgery is i would have ran to the clinic oh oh let me run to the doctor's office oh this is the doctor clinic what do i need to go like oh what you want me to sign oh, okay you know but now i'm more like it's just a face <laughs> it's just a face like it's just a face like who cares it's just a face. There's so much other stuff to worry about. But how I look shouldn't be like top, you know what I mean? Like that's like the number one thing that I was allowing myself to be concerned with at one point was the way that I look. That makes no sense. Who cares? Who fucking cares? And TMI, but wearing the face mask and everything, it actually made me forget. Though for the first time, during the pandemic, that was the first time that the first thing a person didn't notice about me was my face. Because of the mask, like my mask will cover and like for the most part, I look like a regular person. And then that's what, if I'm like this, you know, for the most part, for the most part, if my the bottom of my face is covered, you won't be able to you know, sift out the notice the facial paralysis unless you're just like really like unless you just are smart and you know someone who has facial paralysis or something like that. Oh my God! One time, this lady asked me if I had a stroke. She's like, "Did you have a stroke?" 
I'm like, are you okay? And I'm like, are you like, no, are you okay? No, if even if I did have a stroke, do you think that's appropriate to ask me if I had a stroke? What is going on? Are you okay? Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just saying that I don't know if I would get the surgery. If I, if someone would have come to me with the resources to get the surgery, um, two or three years ago, I would have 1000%, but now I'm like, to spend money on surgery that's gonna enhance my beauty, not even enhance, but will bring me more in line to modern day beauty standards. To me, that's, that's starting to be a little bit more foolish than I would have thought of it a couple years ago. I would have been like, absolutely. But now I'm like watching things like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna watching things like K Michelle's show, and I'm gonna do reaction videos for that. K Michelle's show about surgery because I'm like body 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 positivity. I'm all for it, but I'm also like for people who do what they want to do with their body. You know what I'm saying? So whatever. But watching shows like that and seeing how this surgery shit can backfire, honestly, it's literally not even worth it to me anymore. Like I might go in for surgery. And then next thing you know, they be, I'm being told like, we. I'm sorry, we had to amputate. What do you mean? I came here for a tummy tuck, my nigga. What do you mean amputate? Like what? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, but I don't know. There's just like, I'm just thinking there's so much going on in this world. It would be crazy. The only way I can see myself getting a surgery like that is if I'm literally a multimillionaire and I just have money in abundance, too much money to spend. Then, you know, somebody who's on like Kanye West level, somebody who's like super rich, you know what I'm saying? Like Beyonce level, like just rich for no reason. Then I can spend money on like enhancements. But like being a regular Dagula and getting a surgery like that, unless it's free, mm -mm, I wouldn't do it. Unless it's free, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't even consider it unless it's free. So, because it's just crazy. Like, surgery to make me look prettier? That's so fucking vain. It's just a face. I guess I just had to realize, like, I'm more than my face. You know, just also, like, I was thinking that I feel the same way about makeup. Even though I like to do makeup, I think makeup is pretty. I'm starting to feel the same way about makeup. Like, it's just a face to sit and spend so many so much time put applying makeup to the face to me is starting to blow my mind you know it's starting to go crazy like same thing about weave like to put someone else's hair on my head just to adhere to a beauty standard that's weird that's really blowing my mind but i do it i do it same thing for social media to like take pictures dress up look cute go out just to look a certain way on social media like no it's not worth it it's not worth it um yeah mm, i feel kind of sick and i'm gonna go to sleep because it's 12 and that's good like i've been up for a while now but so I think it's fine for me to go to sleep. Well, anyways, I want to surround myself with people who don't give a fuck what I look like. They care about what's inside of my heart, what's inside of my head, what's inside of my spirit. You know what I mean? That's the connections that I'm looking to make, and those are the people that I'm looking to meet. So, just saying.
Okay. Well, I'm gonna go now because I feel like I was rambling and I feel like I covered everything. So having facial paralysis really has affected me. And I also, I wanna talk about it. I'm gonna revisit this. I'm gonna talk about how I think it's affected my personality, how my stunting my personality, you know? And I'll be back. See you, bye.